Our guests tonight have both played the iconic character Doctor Who and we are so happy they've both joined us here on the show tonight. The wonderful, the terrific Jodie Whittaker and David Tennant. Hello. Hey guys, how are you? Oh, dandy. I got to Andy, all the better for seeing you. Well, I'm thrilled to see you. I've got to say, I, I consider this an absolute honour and a privilege to be interviewing two Doctor Whos, one former, one current. This is a, mm -hmm. this is a big deal for me, and I know a very big deal for all of the, the huge Doctor Who fans that are out there. Now, you're both in the UK at the moment. How are you doing? How is home? during all of this lockdown? Because I only ever really hear it from my mum and dad. I'm interested yeah. in your perspective. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit confused. A little. I, you, the, it's, um, it was very clear at the beginning. I was, I, I like a rule. I'm going to stick to it wholeheartedly. Quite passionate about it. And now the last, the last week or so has got a bit, what? So Ambiguity bit, has crept in. Yeah. Talk, tell me what's open, David. So shops are open, <sighs> restaurants Some are shops are open, some shops aren't open. Some kids are at school, some kids aren't at school. It's, you know, it's sort of what you make it. It used to, like Jody said, it was very binary at first. And now it's like, yeah, go out, don't go out. I don't know. Go on the tube, don't go on the tube. It is quite hard to keep up. It would, I mean, what we need really is a prime minister, but unfortunately we have a Coco the Clown tribute act. So we're struggling for clarity in the UK right now. <laughs> Come and live in America. See how you feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> now, we, I want to say this to you, Jody. We, yesterday was your birthday, and we say happy oh. birthday to you. Uh, you. How is Jodie Whittaker's birthday celebrations in lockdown? Massive. I did. Yeah. Um, we did, uh, <laughs> like, racing down the garden on a space hopper. Nice. Even win. Right. Uh, it was... You know, it was a massive guest list, me, my other half, and my kid. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty full on. So you didn't even plan some kind of Zoom extravaganza? The Zoom extravaganza. I mean, I didn't get dressed up for you, babe. The first makeup I've worn during this lockdown is actually for Zoom 2 after this. Oh. With, with the lifers from Huddersfield, and we will be ah. echoing. Oh, well, that. It's a See, I share it with one of my best friends. She's two days ahead, I'm two days behind. We have to share the glory. Now, let's talk about Doctor Who. Obviously, the, the show is massive. <laughs> to anyone who doesn't know it, it's hard to put into real terms, what it means to its fans. Now that the yeah. show will be streaming on HBO Max, for anyone who hasn't caught up with it, doesn't know what it is, Jody, you're the current Doctor right now. Explain to the, to the viewers watching what Doctor Who is. Can you summarize it in 30 seconds? I'd summarize it by saying, you're gonna get on HBO Max season one to 11. I'd start with season 11. Has a really great- I'd go with, I'd, I'd go with two. Around about season two is where it really comes alive, I'd say. I think when you introduced us, you gave me top billing. It didn't go unnoticed, babe. You said Jodie Whittaker. Well, I think I, I think, think I got an and. I think I got an and, and that's sometimes better. And wow. introducing. Yeah. <laughs> this, what you're watching right now, I'm just going to talk to the viewers at home for a minute. What you're watching right now is two brilliant actors who have been starved of attention for three months. <laughs> and the slightest glimpse, it's become about billing and status. Um, bitter, bitter, bitter. But the, the show is, is incredible. David, when you got the call to be Doctor Who, I know that you were a massive fan of the show growing oh, yeah. up. What was that moment like for you? Well, it's part of our cultural heritage in this country. This show's been going since 1963. So just about everyone alive in Britain has grown up with it or has certainly has had it in their lives. So it is, it, it feels like you're being handed something very, and it was something, like you said, something that I loved. I was, mm. uh, I had Doctor Who posters on my wall. I queued to meet Tom Baker and get him to sign my book when I was a kid. You know, it was, it was a big deal to me. So there's a, there's a double-edged sword to that because it's wonderful and thrilling to become part of that that thing that means so much to you, but you're also, you don't want to break it. You don't want it for your eight year old self. It's very important that you keep it going, you know? How hard was it for you? Cause you did, what well, did you do three seasons on the show? David? I sort of did three and then some more specials after you. Yeah. How hard was it for you to walk away from a role and a character that meant so much to you? 
it was really tough because I was having such a good time. But that's sort of what defined it for me. I kind of thought, I, I, I want to always look back on this as something really special and something that was always fun. And I wanted to get out before it became a chore. Right. Before I kind of thought, oh, I've got to go to work today. And then I, I never got there. Yeah. I always still was, it, it always felt like fun, exciting. It's not really like any other job, as Jody can attest. Well, Jody, you're the first female doctor. And when this got announced, it was the biggest news story in the country. It was on the front page of every newspaper, it, you know, internet chat rooms and theories and all those things. Um, I know that David was one of the first people that you called when you well, yeah, got the that job. Was, that was a sneaky two, like previous call. So well, tell me about that it. phone call. Well, I think it, it, well, it was brilliantly set up by Chris Chibnall, the showrunner who was, who wrote Broadchurch as well, which, yeah. which, which brought our friendship together. And um, he said, I think I'm right in saying this. He said to David, um, if it's okay, can I give the next doctor your number? And they're gonna ring you. And so then I pop up and he's like, hello. <laughs> I was like, Hiya. But I was in the, am I about to be Reese fans in Notting Hill opening a door? To, yeah. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Like I had no idea what was about to come because all I could think of was the kind of, like you say, the worst case scenario, you're about to sink the ship that has been going so long and has been such a flagship show. But you don't you do not do any like filming before you're announced. Yes, of course. So, but you hear all the chat, you get everyone's opinion <laughs> before you do it. But it was brilliant because like the best thing David said and is the thing that I would pass on to the next doctor is it like it's the best, most incredible journey, but it can't be described. And once you're in it, you know you can't describe it, but it's like this unwritten code in our little tiny family of people that knows what this is like. I mean, the show has the most passionate fan base, Whovians, uh, mm -hmm. as, as they are as they are known. And, and they are, as far as I can see, in the tiny sort of little patches of that world that I've seen, they are a, a glorious <laughs> bunch of people, oh, yeah. their, 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 their fandom is kind of the most joyous and celebratory I, I've found it to be. What, David, what have been some of your most, your most interesting interactions with the, the most passionate fans? I think for me, because the thing that always, when I was a kid, the thing that, the, why I think the show meant so much to me is that the doctor was never, he was the hero, but he wasn't the jock, mm. you know? And I certainly wasn't, you know, I, in Paisley with my, National Health Service glasses that were balanced on because I broke them every every couple of days. You know, I was never that kind of sporty, kind of uh, virile type. So the doctor was someone I could be, I could aspire to be. I could, and he was he celebrated because he's because he's clever, because he's clever and kind, and that's such wonderful things for a character to represent. And when you meet little kids who are having that experience that I had as, as, uh, as a little boy. That's, that's what, what I find most moving, I think. I mean, J Jody, you must, it must be, I think it's, it must be wonderful for the first time with this character to be meeting young girls who are suddenly seeing themselves in the Doctor. Have you found that to be a, a, a regular occurrence? Yeah, it, it's really, what's been brilliant is so when we've shot before especially because the storylines are so secretive so, so a lot of the time you're shooting in really secret locations but there are the times that we've been able to be out and about and you get like you say little girls who are dressing as the doctor and they haven't had to chop their hair off or they've you know they're they're in, in a costume that f feels at one with them as much as it would with a little boy and i think Something happened the other day that was brilliant, but my reactions are always bigger than the other people because I'm really over emotional. I cry all the time. And I'm such a fangirl for stuff anyway. If I see anyone that I'm like slightly starry about, I'll just like go, no. So I was driving to like to the shop and I pulled out and a girl cycled past, like a teenager cycled past in my t-shirt. Oh my God, I was like, ah! no road safety. Winded out, I was like, hi, 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 come here. And like a parents were Oh, I was like, it's me. But I was like, I was like, oh God, isn't this brilliant? But I think for her, it was just like, I don't know if you're going to meet your heroes when they turn out to be terrifying. 
Yeah. I, mean, I started this question with, it must be amazing for young girls to see themselves in you now. And now young girls are like, well, I, I know what not to do. Yeah. I mean, the best thing is, it's like, I've never tried to be too cool for school. So, you know, well, I've gone with that. I've run, I've run with it. Uh, now, Reggie, do you have a question for any of our guests this evening? Yes, I do. Uh, tonight's question goes to... Uh, let's make it for uh, both of our doctors. Okay, a double doctor. If you were flying, if you found yourself suddenly flying in the air and you got really, really hungry, what do you think you'd bring? It's a good question. Um, M and M's. Bottle of prosecco. We've gone with M and M's and prosecco, just in case you weren't aware that we're talking to two British people. <laughs> Reg, is that correct? That's actually uh, correct times two. It's absolutely correct. Please thank oh, our wonderful really? guests, Jodie Whittaker and David Tennant. When we come back, Leon Bridges is here with very special guests, Terrace Martin and Robert Glasper, everybody.